Okay, here we go. I'm going to do a little bit of a background for you. And um, I'm setting the camera up so you can see the palette at first, but then I'm going to bring the camera in so you can see a little bit more of the painting action. And here is my palette. Looking good. Look at that. Wow. Okay, not bad. So I, yeah, as you can see, I there goes my blue dripping right down inside there. So I have Windsor Blue Red Shade. I have Windsor Green Blue Shade, and I have Permanent Alizarin Crimson here. Now in the book, I'm, I know it gives you a, might give you a different color combination, and you can follow that color combination. But over the years, my taste has changed in pigments, so um, this is this is what I came up with for the background. I'm going to be doing a wet on dry technique and mixing, mixing, mixing. We're going to get a nice variety of darks and here it goes. So this is your typical, you know, gray. Um, I'm going to add a little more permanent lizard and crimson to it because I want that um, eggplant color right here. Okay, and if I drop in a lot of water, you can see the color that it's going to be. Um, why do I do a wet on dry versus a wet into wet? Well, wet into wet is perfectly fine. You can do that. I'm adding my blue right here into my green. Okay, lots of darks. And, you, and I want you to look at the consistency of the pigment. Um, what was the question I asked myself? Let's see. Why wet on dry versus wet into wet? You can do wet into wet, but I like doing wet on dry because I know it's going to stay nice and dark and keep that nice, and I don't have to do it twice, okay? Because we're going for a really dark background. And you can see I have three um, one-stroke brushes ready to go. And I would suggest if you're uncomfortable hitting the edges with your flat, you can always bring in a nice little round to help you out. Um, that's always nice. Also, um, I have a bigger, this one's a one inch uh, brush and this will stay clean hopefully. I'll keep this over in the water, the clear water that I have for right now. Um, and yeah, and that can, I can use the brush with the clear water to activate some of that pigment and move it. And if I want to go a little lighter, you don't want it to be flat black because um, then it's it's just too it's too flat. <laughs> you want a little bit of movement. Okay. They don't call it flat black for nothing. Okay, here it comes. Here comes my computer's coming in. Sorry about the jiggling of it all. But we want to get it just right. Okay. So there you have it. Now let's begin. And for those of you that get very, uh, I know one of the students said she was very nervous about doing the background. Now, don't be nervous. It's okay because you can always, you can always paint back over it. Backgrounds are, are very forgiving. So I'm going to come right up here to the tabletop, drop it in, drop it in. And you can see, you know, it's going on nice and thick, not so thick that it's it's nice and dark I want to say it's not thick to where you can see the uh, pigment piling up okay so I'm just keep moving it now I went to my I'm going to my water jar I'm going to show you this real quick so I keep going back and forth to my water jar to activate some of this um, pigment and pull it through look at that oh also did not little uh, probably figured it out by now my paintings upside down um, and Painting upright like this for the camera purposes it, um, is nice to have it upside down. But not only that, I, you know, when I'm working at a table, I would absolutely have it upside down and, and pull it towards me. As Guy Magellana says, it's his comfort, not yours. Okay, here you go. <laughs> and here comes a little bit of green. Oh, so we're going to add that in. Okay, nice dark green. Okay, and that has the blue in it also. Okay, and just keep moving it, moving it down, down. And you can see this, um, this background is cropped a little closer, and that's for um, 
that's for me not to have to do a whole background on camera because who knows how long that'll take. But just if you keep your pigment moving, 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 and you're really totally prepared with clear, clean water, nice big um, jar of clear water, maybe two, and just take your time when you get into this area. Oh, wow, this has turned out really pretty. It's been a long time since I've done a background. Hmm. This is really pretty. I love these color combo because there's some teals and you can see some movement back here. Now, don't do as I do. What happens to me is once I see something really pretty happening in my background, then I want it to happen all over the place. But if you do that, you're going to end up with a lot of spots. So, um, you know, be selective when, when you... Um, do a movement change like adding water or pigment or color change or you know so it, you want some you want a lot of areas that will rest be restful on the eye and not too movement not too much movement generally what happens is when I first started doing this um, I had to go back in and um, with a wet brush and kind of uh, after it was dry of course and give it a once over with the nice wet brush so so that does calm down uh, some of the movement so if you find that at the end you've got too many spots let's call them spots for lack of a better word but they are kind of spots um, and no worries you can take a wet brush back over it and you just you just take one big old swipe at it with a nice damp brush like so just like this, after it's dry, of course, um, and uh, it calms down all that activity that uh, you had so much fun painting in. Okay, so I'm still moving my, my brush around in my palette. You know, you might want to see some of that action. Let me turn take this down a little bit. So, so I just go from puddle to puddle and I collect my pigments, and here it comes, right here. Yeah, so now that I was mentioning, you know, finding those restful areas, look at me, I'm not finding it. It's a little bit active. But I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to finish up right here. Just go ahead and even add a little bit of water right here. Yeah, that's not bad. I like that. Mm, I like it so much I add it red. Boy, here we go. And coming in, yeah. right there. And you're just going to keep moving it all the way around, all the way around. Oh, nice. Had the camera on the palette for a while there. Okay, now I'm going to come in with um, a smaller brush. And you can detail around the onion. Okay. Right there. And now is the time, too, to, um, you know how the darks, I keep saying the dark values support the lighter values? Well, that's the same with the background. If you see something that needs a little bit of a, you know, a push or a pop, that you can add, like, a little bit, you know, go ahead and darken that value right next to, like, let's say the garlic or something, and you really want it to have that wow factor and, um, but you don't want to outline the whole thing so it looks like it's been cut out. So, um, yeah, be selective with this also. Okay. And um, I'm going to continue on to the other side. And I want to make sure my hand is not totally in the way here. Look at that, how pretty that is when I just add water. See what I'm doing? I'm adding a lot more water here because it can get lighter on this side or it could be darker on this side. Probably should be darker because the light source is coming from this side here. So let's go way darker because I can see this is um, drying a little lighter here. And we can um, start adding more color. There we go. Yeah, let's do that. We're going to go way dark on this other side. Go in there, whoosh, and um, 
Yeah, so you're probably maybe wondering how do you select the color for your background? How do you, you know, how do you know if you want a dark background? And that's in your reference photo too. You can kind of see if it, if the background that um, is in the reference photo, like I know in the reference photo that you're working from, it's a lighter green. But, you know, that's just there just to, for a jumping off point. And uh, you get to switch it up to whatever you like. I like taking the three colors that are in um, my painting and mixing them up and letting them just go ahead and uh, play out and, and uh, mingle about in my background. Okay, here it comes. Yeah, this is getting a little too blue for my taste. So I'm going to add a little bit more red and purple. So yeah, there you go. I like that. That's nice. And don't forget, because since we're painting on this canvas, right, you're going to want to paint along the sides as well. Because we are going to have a nice, a nice, um, in two weeks we'll be having the, on. Um, I'm sorry, during the fourth week, we will be going over varnishing um, and we're going to do a really nice detailed lesson on varnishing and uh, this will be the first time I've ever really given a class on this and I think it's, it'll be nice because we can I'm going to give you a list of supplies that you're gonna you're gonna want to order before the last week of this session and we can varnish our pieces together I'm hoping to have a video done by then that will just um, help you, you know, so we, you don't have to do it right on the spot or, or you all you can save the varnishing portion for when you're really, really ready for it. Okay, now, here we go. Running in another bigger, let's see, this is three quarters inch, this brush that I'm using. And here it comes. Okay. You can see I'm not adding too much water to that because I really want it dark on that side. But there's a point in time when you don't want it to be too pasty either. So, okay. And here it comes right here. Wow. Nice. And there you have it. Right there. Let's finish it off. See, and do you see how I just kept that pigment moving from one side to another and I did not go back in? Do not go back in. Do not go back in. I can't tell you. Let it dry, dry, dry because the temptation to go back in and fiddle with something is so great right now. But trust me, you want to wait till it dries, okay? So there's your demo for doing backgrounds.